so a very pleasant good afternoon everyone um, welcome to the afternoon session i know after the tea i thought i hope this becomes a little more bearable um, so uh, i work in the area of gold and the topic i chosen to work uh, last year was about price jumps which intrigued me because it is one of the areas which is quite popularly researched in stock markets but when it come to gold i could not find any research that why crashes and spikes happens in gold and what causes them so i'm going to start uh, by showing you few interesting facts so yes um, i'll walk you through the motivation and the rationale as to why i chose the topic followed by few research gaps which i found from the literature uh, which crystallized my research objectives and questions and then we'll follow up with the empirical studies and followed up with the uh, uh, the findings so gold as a uh you know david also said it's a critical asset uh, of use because it's uh, a hedge a diversifier and a safe haven which makes it a strategic financial investment uh, you know we say that mostly 10 to 15% of allocation has to go uh, in the gold uh, other than that it is a reserve asset so when it's a reserve asset obviously the central banks uh, invest in them but then something very interesting happened is it is one of a very very efficient market which makes it very hard to predict now if it's hard to predict then how you really define what drives the price of gold uh, i'm just uh, is there a problem with the because in my presentation i could not see the slides yeah okay okay anyways so but how do i move the slides up and down through that because it's not moving i don't have the control is there acha is there any other ye wala यहाँ पे तो खुल ही नहीं रहा है ना अब इधर नहीं आएगा ओके सॉरी अबाउट द ग्लिच ओके सो कमिंग बैक टू गोल्ड बींग रिमार्केबली एफिशिएंट आई थिंक इट्स स्टिल नॉट Uh, is there a problem uh, do i send some other file kyu ho raha hai inko inko haath se karne ka bolta hai ye wo aage bhi slide hi dikhta hai upar hai बिफोर दैट ओके ओके so uh, with that we uh, found that uh, gold prices are majorly driven by madness of the crowd rather than fundamental factors and there were a couple of researcher george soros being the one who really uh, popularized the statement uh, that you know more than any asset in the world it's gold which is majorly driven by investor perception rather than the fundamentals so we found a couple of instances of gold price crashes to walk you through some of them these are the newspaper clippings of the most recent ones so we see gold prices crashing because of israel hamas gold prices really jumping because of the us dollar markets gold prices going up because of a firm dollar uh, gold prices really crashing to the count of 1000 rupees per uh, gram or 2500 rupees uh, per kilogram that's the kind of news we keep hearing but then really the question is is all of the crashes driven by news or is there some factor other than news also which causes price crashes and spikes so to give you a few of these instances yes there was a 1 trillion dollar crash back in 2013 wherein on 12th of april about 25% of the gold price crashed and of which about 25 dollar crashed within 4 or 2 minutes 
there was another instance during covid period wherein because of the covid there was a crash of 4% on a single day even in 2021 when the covid vaccines came up there was again a drop of 100 dollars again in a matter of 15 minutes now how do you justify these uh, impacts and there are several of them so what i did was just to give you a visual appeal of the how crashes look like this was the most uh, famous crash of 2013 followed by the very recent crash of 2022 in the gold markets then you can see a simple candlestick chart of how gold prices have crashed multiple times from 2000 2020 till the time and some of uh, the technical charters have actually deepened down onto the ex explicit date time and minutes of these gold crashes so what how do you define econometrically these price crash and price jumps so price jump is nothing but a very sudden a very large upward or downward movement within minutes so when something of that magnitude happens we call it as a price jump now a price jumps basically are conduits of immediate market reaction to any information whether it's a macroeconomic news or a firm specific and what are co jumps when two or more assets jump together simultaneously it's called a co jump so my study basically revolved around understanding the price jumps and jumps in the gold markets there were multiple instances but they were under researched there was no systematic evidence as to how many jumps happen in gold at what frequency which year or which hour of the day has the maximum jumps in gold uh, futures or etfs there was no evidence similarly the unanticipated nature of these drivers some said that jumps are information driven while others said no on in uh, they are not information they are just purely uh, driven by liquidity so that also led to no consensus in the academic literature as to what causes price jumps so uh, we uh, got some idea um, we bifurcated the literature into three parts one of the literature says it's uh, the jumps are majorly caused by macroeconomic news the other said no we don't agree it's caused by the liquidity shocks or illiquidity shocks and the third one said that no look it from a behavioral finance perspective it is the over reaction or the emotional reaction of the investors or the market to the news that causes jump so which brought us to the central research question as to what causes intraday price jumps and co jumps in gold market is it the market psyche is it the macroeconomic news or is it the shocks to the illiquidity so we wanted to break that down into three channels so we got the channel mechanism my study really contributes to this aspect that what is a channel through which whenever a new information like news comes it causes jump whether the channel is through market psyche and we define market psyche into three terms whether it is attention sentiments or emotions so sent attention lot of previous re literature on stock markets prove that uh, investor attention or market attention causes overreaction and hence it causes price bubbles instability or crashes another uh, literature said it's the sentiment so real time irrationality of noise traders causes irrationality it causes crashes and price jumps and third literature said that it's not the sentiments rather it is a very specific emotion which is attached or the emotional reaction which causes the price jump the second channel mechanism which i wanted to study was shocks to the liquidity and we define liquidity in three ways trading activity trading cost price impact and the last is the illiquidity so we want we took the uh, support from the literature as to how we define all of these variables so trading activity is basically your volumes your depth your trading cost is basically the bid ask spread or you also have much better version of proportional spreads effective spreads and so on price impact is your order volume which is uh, the bid size minus the ask size so buy side sell side and illiquidity is another we have the way in which amihud he define illiquidity as to when there is a loss of liquidity in the markets so the main research question then really solemnize into these five that does news or social media based investor attention to gold improve pred predictability of price jumps or does positive market sentiment drives positive price jumps and vice versa negative sentiments drive negative pri price jumps third do emotions drive the predictability of price jumps and lastly we wanted to study if news really causes price jumps which are those news can we identify a specific news in the case of gold and lastly does shrinkage in liquidity or what we say as shocks to illiquidity causes price jumps so now moving on to my contribution how my study is different from the others a it's the first time evidence of high frequency analysis of uh, price jumps in gold markets we concentrated on the two major a uh, price discoverers of gold which is the comex gold future and the etf spider this has been proven quite a lot in academic literature i draw the comparative analysis of both these markets because they are quite different in terms of their liquidity their a uh, market microstructure variables the way they have their settlements and their participants 
Thirdly, I deployed a couple of intraday jump detection methodologies, uh, four of them, just to make sure the results are robust. I worked on high frequency data at the level of five minutes from January 2010 to uh, March 2018. And what I found is that I wanted to identify the determinants that what causes these price jumps. I used a very, very proprietary data set called TRMI, so Thomson Reuters Market Psyche Index which gives you at a one minute level what is the emotion, attention and sentiment towards gold. So I use that data to prove the channel mechanism. So I covered all exhaustive list of news, which is all the US scheduled news happening at typically 800, uh, 8.30 uh, a.m. in the morning and also the Federal Reserve news. So using couple of methodologies, just to keep the methodology framework very brief, we covered the Anderson method as a main model which says that any intraday jump is nothing but a very large return compared to a local estimate of volatility. And that local estimate of volatility is just a, a window just before the jump has occurred, so just to make sure that it is averaging out. So we detected jump using this and Lee and Michael and Bollerslave just to make sure it's all robust. For the uh, co-jumps, we did the co-exceedance measure which says that whenever a jump happens in the future as well as on the ETF at the same time we consider it as a co-jump. And lastly, we did the event study methodologies just to show that whenever a jump happens, what happens just five minutes or 10 minutes prior to it. So we took the event study as T minus 60 minutes to T plus 60 minutes just to make sure that even if a happening happens one hour before or after, it is being accounted for. So now coming to what we did we find. So we found that of the futures and the ETF, futures gave much more larger jumps than ETFs. And to be precise, uh, gold experiences more crashes than spikes. So negative jumps were greater than positive jumps. Who was the culprit? Obviously, US macroeconomic news did, uh, uh, did uh, explain about 18 to 25% of these jumps, but all that 75% was still unexplained. And what we found that in terms of liquidity, trading activity, and the uh, trading cost, which is bid ask spread, they were the greatest uh, drivers. Just to show you a few of the graphs, so this is basically the hourly distribution of jumps. So from 7 in the morning, 8, 9, 10, up till now you see the distribution of how many jumps have happened over that time period. So we see majority of the jumps is happening at the 800 hours and the 1400 hours and that's the time wherein US releases their news. Coming on to few descriptives that you see uh, what is the pro uh, probability of having an intraday jump, it's about 26%. So what is the probability of having a jump given its news, it's about only 13 to 7%. So then coming on to these graphs, now you can very visually see what happens when a jump happens at T0, suddenly the return obviously spikes, that's why it's called a jump. But what drives it, it's going to be in the next slide, whether it's the depth, yes, depth starts to rise just five minutes before a jump ha is happening. Whether it's a positive jump, whether it's a negative jump. Similarly, you can see the role of trades. You can see the role of order imbalance. Order imbalance is whether the buy side pressure was more than the sell side pressure. We saw that in the positive jump, the buy side was more than the sell side. And in the negative jump, it was the vice versa. Then we can see the role of trading cost, which is your spreads and army hood illiquidity. Illiquidity was actually very high just before a jump happened in the gold prices. And similar, now coming to the channel mechanism. Did attention, market psyche, emotions have any role? If you can see, this is the first time you're seeing that the news media attention actually rose five minutes before the positive jump happened, which is, this is predictable. You could predict the next gold jump using the TRMI uh, sentiment indices. And similarly, social media attention gives you a very interesting figure as well. So we did that for sentiments, we did that for emotions, and we repeated that for the ETFs market. Then, because obviously graphs don't really say the picture, we have to do some bit of uh, regression analysis, even though event study is also a regression. We did some bit of logistic regression to prove whether a price jump is contingent to all these factors and what kind of results we saw. If you see the first row, US macroeconomic news is the most significant determinant of price jump. But if you see the market psyche factors, and that's the most crucial and critical contribution of my result, that if you see attention in which is, which is coming out from news media sources, they explain mostly negative jumps. But social media based attention, they explain all the positive jumps. So that's an asymmetry we found. 
similarly for emotions if you see emotions are basically explaining all the positive jumps and not the negative ones so for liquidity we we have already given you the results so these are basically the numbers and uh, we did that what happens when interaction happens that news is coming at the same time i interact them with these market psyche so now the results become even more clearer that yes attention to gold at the time of release of us us news is a very important predictable for negative price jumps social media attention during the time of news is a predictable for positive price jumps and similarly for sentiments and emotions we did the similar analysis for co jumps and uh, specific news so co jumps uh cojumps analysis was basically that you could see how many cojumps happen between etf and futures so we saw about 20% of cojumps positive cojumps and 21% of negative cojumps happen between comex futures and etf and for the regression analysis we found the results to be similar that yes attention from the news causes cojumps both in etfs and futures emotions here we they really play a dominant role that emotions towards news which is fear anger towards gold actually drives uh, the intraday gold price co jumps after controlling for all the liquidity factors and so on and so forth and similar interaction factors came out to be positive that attention during the time of news was a significant factor in driving negative co jumps and emotions as well uh, as the uh, social media attention to the news now just wrapping this up majorly from the perspective of which news causes we found that it is a federal market uh announcement which happens at 1400 hours is the major driver of the us news followed by initial um jobless claim and un, and un, uh, unemployment uh, assessment so these are couple of news which causes and the last interesting piece of um, insight which i got from my study is that positive jumps have different drivers and negative jumps have different drivers so the news which causes positive jumps are not same as the news which causes negative jumps So lastly I would conclude this study that this study gave me insights on a very very specific area in market microstructure which is uh, extreme price movements or EPMs or jumps we try to figure out how different uh, dynamics play with with respect to futures and ETFs what are the high frequency behavioral factors or channel mechanism which causes jumps whenever a news happens or when a news does not happen how many jumps are explainable how many jumps are not explainable now coming to the last part of policy that what kind of policy we could really understand so much of it is primarily related to your hedging strategy so yes we know gold prices are susceptible to the madness of the crowd it doesn't have a fundamental impact on demand and supply so it is susceptible to crashes so now what do you do so are there ways to have better hedging strategies can we using these very Uh, highly uh, you know uh, based on high frequency news analytics uh, me methodology these sentiment indices are created by bloomberg's and reuters can we use them to better predict these crashes and develop trading strategies and lastly is the market design issue can we develop products in and around to measure tail risk management so that's all from my side any questions happy to answer uh, thank you uh, thank you professor for this uh, presentation actually as a as uh, you know traders and analysts we don't uh, you realize uh, some of these things but i had one observation you know you mentioned george soros uh, comment uh, where he said that it's probably this is an asset class which is largely driven by economy by sentiment rather than fundamentals but given the fact that it is a safe haven yeah. right and it acts as a currency commodity and insurance then shouldn't it be driven by investor sentiment rather than anything else so so investor sentiment again is a part of market psyche right when you say what what george soros meant that it's not driven by any fundamental factor of demand and supply so demand and supply of gold is not really driving the price of gold rather it is the psyche which the market has towards gold but, but doesn't investor sentiment drive investment demand etf demand or even institutional demand in that sense so exactly that's the demand of the financial product but not the demand of the physical gold we were talking but, about but every financial product is backed by gold right so at the end it is driving physical demand as well yeah but that link we could not find econometrically right. and given that uh, you know the news uh, which you have mentioned is largely from the federal government yes yes and and cme is uh, actually highly liquid uh, futures it's market it's the most liquid yeah. So, yeah so so that 
also uh, you know proves a point which uh, chirag was trying to mention yeah uh, that the sentiments actually are playing a larger role so that's what i think my study proved that it is the market psyche channel whether it is the sentiment towards gold whether it's the emotions towards gold or whether it's the attention somebody gives to the gold products which drives the price movements in the gold prices just if one last yeah. uh, you know out of curiosity you know you've shown 2010 uh, is as a starting base uh, yeah, right yeah, yeah. and that is showing that probably the drops are much more than the the crashes move, are more than the right? spikes yes uh, so two questions one is had, probably if you had taken 2007 would it completely change because 7 8 so, 9 was you know absolutely i think every econometric model is susceptible to your subsample analysis so we did because i chose a very i would say not a very turbulent time period from 10 to 18 Yeah. even though it had very few times of turbulence i did not include the covid and the 2007-8 had i included those period obviously uh, splitting my sample into some period let's say only 2007 till 8 would have given us different answer and that is a good uh, you know add on to my study which i could do if i get the data to work on that yeah thank you thank you uh, thank you niyaka so it was a very engaging thank presentation thank you, thank you.